Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications. In 1954, Robert Moses walked into the office of Mayor Wagner and tendered his resignation. Just minutes earlier, it had seemed that the agents of good governance had won a victory against the great power broker when the mayor had declined to swear Moses into another term on the New York City Planning Commission. The proponents of good governments argued that, since Moses was already park commissioner and construction coordinator, it was against the city charter for the city's builder-in-chief to also be on the council that would vote on whether to fund the projects he proposed. And Mayor Wagner had agreed. But the victory was short-lived. The moment Moses put in his resignation, Wagner caved. Though Moses was an unelected official, merely the head of a few obscure city agencies, he had become one of the most powerful men in the city. He was the spigot that turned the tap of federal funding. He was the master builder and the destroyer of neighborhoods. During his long reign, he built 627 miles of highways and seven bridges, just to name a few of his projects. And Wagner was not the first to capitulate to his demands. Every preceding mayor in the last two decades had also received a resignation from Moses, and each one had responded by giving Moses exactly what he wanted. In the end, it was a group of housewives and a playground that brought him down. But more on that later. For you don't have to be Robert Moses in order to find yourself tasked with building a road. If you are buying vacant land in order to build a house on it, or if you are looking to complete any kind of development project, you will likely confront this challenge at some point. So in today's video, we'll cover the steps that are involved in building a road. Number one. The very first task is to understand whether you will need to build a road as part of your construction project. When you are looking at building a new home on a parcel of vacant land, it's important to keep in mind that counties often require that any new building be connected to a road that meets certain standards. Primarily, the county will likely be checking that the road is wide enough and strong enough to support fire trucks and other emergency vehicles. Number two. Once you determine that you are required to build a road, make sure that you properly plan your project before undertaking construction. If you're building a driveway, do you need to get a permit or permission in order to create a curb cut? If you are building or improving the access road leading up to your property, will the local Department of Transportation be willing to acquire it later? If not, does this matter to you? Is an environmental review process needed? Where are existing utilities located? Are they going to be affected by your construction? And do you need to coordinate with the utility providers? Will you need to secure easements from your neighbors in order to use a portion of their property to build your new road? And will the terrain over which the road is to pass cause problems for construction? Do you need to consider an alternative route? Number three, once you get to the design stage, make sure that you have proper help. Even a driveway is a major construction project. Be sure to survey the area so that you have an accurate representation of the terrain and property boundaries. Be sure you hire an engineer to design your road for you. You will likely also need the help of a soil scientist who will undertake the necessary geotech studies required in order to complete the design of your road. And as you are working with your engineer to design the road, consider the following. Drainage and the natural water flow patterns of the site and area around the road. The expected traffic volume. The ratio of cars to trucks. If you expect that trucks are going to be passing on your road on a regular basis, make sure you design your road to handle their weight. Otherwise, you will have lots of maintenance problems later. Also consider future development in the area. If you are developing a road that will be used by multiple property owners, Think about not only the current traffic volume, but future traffic volume, and ensure that the road is designed to handle this future flow. And finally, think about the impacts on your neighbors. Is the future road and its traffic going to be disrupting them in any way? And if so, how can you mitigate the impacts and work with them to ensure there are no conflicts? Number four, the first part of the actual construction process is the earthwork, and this is the most important part of construction. During the earthwork phase, the contractor will build a road embankment. In order to ensure proper drainage, the center of the road needs to be higher than the edges. Thus, the contractor will use cut and fill to build up the area 
over which the road will pass, so that the proper slope can be created between the road center and the edges. After the embankment has been built, the contractor will level and compact the surface over which the road will run. Proper compaction is a key component of earthwork, and one of the reasons why you want to hire a professional contractor to complete the work. Improperly compacted earthwork will cause you a lot of problems later on. The contractor must then install drains and storm sewers or ditches along the sides of the road to ensure that the road is properly drained and that all water flows away from the road surface. And even more than compaction, this is the most important part, and another reason why you want to hire professionals to help you design and install the road. Drainage is key, and improper drainage will lead to constant damage over the years. Depending on the jurisdiction and the kind of road you are building, at this point the earthwork may need to be inspected by the county. Once the county signs off, gravel can be added to the roadbed. After the earthwork is complete, the road can be paved. Earlier in the design process, you will have decided on whether you want asphalt or concrete pavement. Some of this may be dictated for you by the jurisdiction, but the contractor will install the pavement per the design specs. Keep in mind that the road may need to be tested before it can be used by the public. Tests include vibration tests and also drainage tests. These tests are designed to ensure that the roadbed is properly compacted and that the water flows away from the surface and will not cause inordinate damage moving forward. Once all the tests come back positive, you can add road markings if needed. And number six, completing the construction of your road isn't the end. You will also need to maintain it. As I mentioned earlier, drainage is one of the key aspects of a road and you'll want to ensure that water stays off of the road's surface by maintaining the drainage ditches along its sides. In a similar vein, ensure that the road is properly plowed throughout the winter. If you built an asphalt road, seal coat it every few years. And whenever the road develops cracks, make sure you fill them right away, even small ones. Otherwise, water will infiltrate the cracks and cause further damage. But let's return to our story about Robert Moses and his eventual downfall. When Moses was Park's commissioner, one of his early projects was to evict the sheep from Central Park and put a restaurant on the site of their former pen. Later, in 1954, he proposed placing a new parking lot for the restaurant at the site of a wood hollow that was a favorite playground for many local mothers and their children. A few of the mothers formed a group, Mothers Against Moses, and when Moses ordered bulldozers to start clearing the site without proper notification, the group managed to arrive in time to stage a protest and stop the clearing. Their protest quickly gained wide media attention and represented one of the first instances where Moses miscalculated the optics of his actions. And this was the first step in his decline, a point when the public began to see him not so much as a tireless creator of public improvements, but the heartless destroyer of neighborhoods. And these dual images of him remain. Even today, he is still a larger-than-life figure, and he is an embodiment of many of the debates that center around infrastructure development. His prolific construction was seen by many as the work of a visionary, but he is also widely hated by those who remember how their parents and grandparents were forced from their homes at the hands of Moses' bulldozers. The two sides of his character reflect the balancing act of any major infrastructure project, including highways. On the one hand, there is the need to continuously build, maintain, and improve the public infrastructure that keeps cities and towns and the country vibrant and the economy humming. On the other hand, there are the individuals whose homes and neighborhoods are forever altered whenever a new major public works is placed in their midst. And even smaller projects face these same struggles. And anyone who is looking to build, whether a small private road or a large highway, should consider these trade-offs and think about how to balance the two competing interests. But do you have any stories about building a road? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a land due diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com slash glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down properties at gokchecapital.com slash listings. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening, and more to come.